Thank you. Councillor Ford is next. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm going to be a straight shooter, as I always am. Um, when I drive downtown every day, or at least three or four times a week to come to City Hall, there's no secret. Okay, the cyclists are a pain in the ass to the motorists. Like, let's let's be quite frank. Councillor, I remind you of the need to okay, use and listen, listen, But hold on. Okay, I'll I'll re I'll, I'll re I will I will retract the, the the word ass. But the exact same argument I get from the cyclists that say to me, and as soon as I get the emails, the first thing they say is, you're a fat slob, they go after my big belly, and I say, okay, I can understand that, fine, but what's the solution, okay? Because the cyclists say, I hate you motorists, I can't stand you guys, and they flip you the bird as you're going down Queen Street or Dundas Street. There's this huge animosity between the motorists and the cyclists. There's this huge animosity, and it's never going to go away, Madam Speaker. The... Madam Chair, can you... The problem is we have the Etobicoke, North York, and Scarborough people that use cars all the time, and we have the downtown people that don't use cars that often. And if I lived downtown, I'd be with the cyclists. I would, you don't need a car to go from point A to point B. I've got a few friends that are couriers down here, and they scoot around all the time. We go out on Friday or Saturday, they're here and there, they're everywhere. And, and, and that's the way they get around, I can understand that. And every single person here learned to ride a bike when they're three or four. Because just over the weekend, I'm, I'm teaching Stephanie, my four-year-old, how, how to ride a bike on, four, on two wheels. She's had a little tricycle, and now we're smoking along, and we're down at James Garden's bike path, and half of it says rollerbladers and bikes, and the other one is pedestrians. This is on James Garden's. This is a bike path that is completely organized from here down to the lake. And I think we can organize a bike path from here to the lake, but why can't we organize a road when we have motorists on it? It's going on and on and on. This debate's been going on forever. The only solution is the cyclists are, are putting their lives at risk every time they go on this road because if there is an accident, you know who's going to get the worst of it. We have to widen our sidewalks. I've been saying that from day one. Widen our sidewalks split our sidewalks basically in half, pedestrians on one side, closer to the stores, and the cyclists on the other side. It will work in the city. But as long as you keep putting white paint down the line and saying, cyclists, you stay here, motorists, you stay here, you're going to have major problems. You're going to have people killed every year, which happens every year, Madam Speaker. And, and you know, how else are we going to do it? I haven't heard one person come up with a solution. Not one person come up with a solution. That's the only way we can do this is why there's, we have boulevards in Etobicoke green that are about four or five yards wide. If we have to take some of the green space, widen the sidewalk and have a bike only lane, it will work. It's the only viable solution. People can sit here and criticize, but there's animosity between the cyclists and the, it's never gonna go away. And but there are the, the the thing that gets me though, at the end of the day, is I, I, I and, and I get a lot of um, emails from cyclists saying you don't support bike lanes, you don't you know, you're nasty, you're this, you're that. Okay, I, I can understand that and I can take the uh, criticism, but they're really digging their own grave at the end of the day. Because what's gonna happen is they're gonna be asked to get insurance, they're gonna be asked to get license. I guarantee that's the way it's going. The motorcyclists, all the motorists who drive cars, everyone else is on. So if they're going to want the road, you know enough pressure is going to come, they're going to force the cyclists to, hey, if you're on our road, you have to be like everyone else. What gives you the exception? And then I told a few of them that. They said, Rob, you've got a point, but come on. I said, but listen, is it right? You, you can't disagree with that argument. That's going to come eventually. So we can have bike lanes all through the city, but the cyclists are the ones that are going to pay. They're going to pay through their pocketbook. And nobody likes to pay. Is there's no secret about it? There, there's a there's a war on cars in the city. It's obvious as the days are long. We have a car registration tax. Never ever debated in any mayor's uh, race. Never. All of a sudden, it just a dropped off sixty dollar car registration tax. 
that just caught people right off guard. Infuriates people to this day. I get calls an about it. Extinction all in favor and, of public and this, and if that's not an attack on the voters of the city, I don't know what is. I really don't, Madam Speaker. So yes, you're absolutely right. We, the speed humps are, um, don't meet the criteria here. The stop signs, every possible thing to try to put a roadblock in front of cars in the city, is there. And we've seen it over and over and over again. Um, but really, six million dollars, six million dollars right now in the middle of a recession. I get calls from people saying, "I want the potholes fixed." And you know who says that to me? Not just the motorists, the cyclists. I just hit a pothole. I went ass over tea kettle, went on the sidewalk, and hurt myself. Well, this is, you know, this is. A, they want it fixed just as much as anybody else does. So let's put that money into fixing our our roads. Resurfacing them. The roads are worse than they've ever been, and, I, and, I, and I've been all over the place. And, and, and I just I, I can't get my head around it how we're sinking six million dollars into this, and this this problem still to this day. I'm calling Mr. Walsh saying, please get them fixed. We haven't got the money. We haven't got the resources. And now we're into May already, June. So, and what really gets me? What what really really gets me? Just one thing, the good, the good, the, the good left wingers down here, like Councillor Perks and Vaughn and the Bear Maker, like the extreme left, the left left, the far left, yeah, and Pam too, and Pam too. The, the 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 funny thing is, you're the first ones that say, "Bail out the auto sector. We gotta fund it. We gotta build more calls. We gotta bail out the auto sector. Let's fund the General Motors. Let's get Chrysler out. Let's build cars. Let's build cars." And but the extreme left is saying the complete opposite. We don't want cars. Well, you either support your union buddies at GM and ask for government bailouts, or you don't. You're a little you off topic. No, no, but it's true, Madam Speaker. You know that's true. Time that's to exactly talk. where the NDP stand. Thank you. Oh. All right. Next speaker, Councillor DiGiorgio. And could I ask uh, the deputy speaker to come forward again, please? Councillor Parker? Uh, I, I move that Councillor Ford's time be extended by a further seven minutes. <laughs> That's contrary to the procedural bylaw, but thank you. Okay.